Officials and advocates in the San Francisco Bay Area are begging landlords to take homeless people into their empty units. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing in Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's going over the homelessness issue in the San Francisco Bay Area. Now, as most people know, California and the San Francisco Bay Area in particular are some of the worst absolute places for homelessness in the entire country. I mean, there's just a huge number of homeless people and they've taken away a lot of the public nuisance laws there. So stuff like, you know, defecation on the streets and open drug use and, you know, just it's ridiculous. Okay. So it looks like an absolute slum in some places when you go down there and you know it that's crazy to me so one of the the solutions that some of these officials and advocates came up with in order to, to handle this homeless problem is to beg landlords to take <laughs> homeless people into their empty units and that's not all okay they're also asking individual homeowners you know to take homeless people into their houses okay and you know live with them okay this is crazy stuff and you know i i do believe that hey there is a huge huge homelessness issue right but i don't think that a lot of people are going to want to take in homeless people into their own personal homes so in this video or yeah i'm going to actually cover an article that's you know talking about that and i'm going to cover a second article as well that's talking about the negative consequences of if you do happen to have a big heart and want to take a homeless person into your house now, before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button, maybe leave a comment down below, and let me know what you think, okay? Out of the kindness of your heart, as a landlord, are you going to take a bunch of homeless people into your empty property or into your empty units? I'll tell you right now, there's no way. And while I'm reading this article, I'm going to explain exactly why I would not do it, especially in the state of California. So... This article is coming from the Daily Mail and it says, homelessness in the San Francisco Bay Area is now so bad, residents are being asked to house a homeless person in their own homes. Politicians and charities claim locals want to be part of the solution. Let's get into it. Homelessness in the Bay Area has become such a problem, people are being urged to give their spare rooms over to the homeless. Some charities have urged local families who are sick of seeing homeless crisis on their doorsteps to do something about it personally by taking unhoused people into their own homes and spare rooms. And some schemes have little to no compensation. Christy Carpenter, executive director of the East Bay nonprofit Safe Time, which places homeless families and college students in spare bedrooms for one to six months, told Mercury News, this is something that someone can do when they just feel that despair of, oh my gosh, I just can't stand seeing these poor people on the streets near my home. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, okay? When we're talking about the homelessness issue, a lot of people, they believe that, hey, uh, all these people are homeless because they can't afford housing. That is so far from the truth that it's not even funny, okay? The homelessness issue is caused by a number of factors, right? And affordability is just one small factor in it. But, you know, if we want to wonder about these people who are long-term homeless, well, we, we have to look at mental health issues, okay? We have to look at drug abuse. We have to look at alcohol abuse, okay? And then, you know, we start to realize that, hey, a lot of these people who are on the streets, they want to be there, okay? They're not actually um, trying to find somewhere to live because the way that it works if you have a drug issue and you go down to the local shelter they're not going to let you use your drugs in the shelter or they're not going to let you you know be drinking excessive alcohol in the in the shelter so these people would rather live on the streets than have to deal with all the rules and stipulations that are required in order to live in in the shelter so you know that that is a huge issue 
But, you know, there, there are solutions. And I, I think one of the solutions is we got to take care of this drug problem, okay? The drug issue is humongous. And, you know, it causes a ton of this homelessness, right? And it causes a ton of crime. You know, we're talking about public nuisance crimes, property crimes, you know, theft, etc., assaults, robberies. All of this is caused by drugs. <laughs> and, you know, and homelessness is a symptom of the drug problem. You know, you know what I'm saying? So th th this is a huge problem and it can't be solved by just b saying, hey, hey, just let these people move on into your house. That's a, a completely ridiculous argument. But, you know, it doesn't surprise me that some, you know, <laughs> bleeding heart, you know, person is like, oh, well, you just take them into your house. And like I said, I got another article and it's a good example of exactly why you don't want to just let anybody up into your house. Since 2017, the group has made more than 60 placements. There are an estimated 30,000 homeless in the five-county Bay Area, which are comprised of the East Bay, North Bay, South Bay, Peninsula, and the City of San Francisco regions. The mayor of the Richmond, uh, located in the East Bay County of Contra Costa, about 20 miles from downtown San Francisco, has set up a program to match homeless people with local landlords who have empty apartments. Funded by private donations, it will pay the landlords a year's rent up front to encourage them to forego the usual credit, employment, and background checks for tenants. So, yeah, they got this program, and basically, it, I guess it's uh, in this uh, city of Richmond, okay, and they will pay you a year of rent if you put a homeless person into one of your empty uh, properties or empty units, right? It'll pay you in advance. And so some people think, oh yeah, this is great for the landlords. This will work out perfect. But then you have to remember where this is taking place. This is the San Francisco Bay Area of California, okay? Do you know how many tenant protections there are there? Do you know how many eviction protections there are there? Okay, so you move this homeless person in, even if they pay you a full year rent ahead of time, Okay, they go in there and, you know, a lot of homeless people, like I said, they have mental health and drug issues, right? They go in there, they rip your property apart, you know, they tear the place apart and you want to move to evict this person. Guess what? Darn near impossible. Okay, you're now stuck in this purgatory of, you know, trying to get rid of a bad tenant within the San Francisco Bay Area within California, okay? And you also know that this person who is homeless, right, unless they suddenly got their act together and cleaned up, which is possible, right? But sometimes it's just not gonna happen. Well, as soon as that year is over, they're not gonna have the ability to pay the rent going forward. And that charity probably won't have any more money for you. So now you've got a tenant in there who isn't paying, who tear your property up, you, you can't evict, <laughs> you know? You, you see why a landlord wouldn't want to participate in this program, okay? A year's worth of rent isn't worth the trouble for all of this, okay? It's just not worth it. Now, you know, I'm sure that there are some landlords who probably are non-profit landlords or charities who are willing to do something with this sort of program, but the for-profit landlords are gonna be like, you know what, I, I can just go and get a regular tenant, one who will pay me on time every month, and that'll be the end of it. I mean, you can't even do tenant screening on these people. So if you don't do screening, you know, they say, oh, well, you can't even do a background check. So you could be putting a homeless, you know, um, child molester up into your property and not even know. Okay, because you can't do a background check. This is how stupid this program is, okay? Do they really think that any landlord in their right mind would want to participate? Oh, man. Idiocy. Always idiocy. Okay, there's better solutions than this to the homeless issue. But let's continue. That's the carrot, Mayor Tom Butt told DailyMail.com, adding that they were paid the market rate but we have had some landlords come forward and offer it lower as they want to participate. Asked whether people express concern over the potential dangers of welcoming homeless people into their homes or apartments, he insisted that people care more about the plight of unhoused people and the homeless camps. Yeah, and there, like I said, there's going to be landlords who want to participate. 
The grand majority are going to say no, though. Okay, and that's that's just the truth. This is it isn't enough to incentivize a landlord to take in this tenant who you you know homeless, maybe has drug issues, maybe has a horrible criminal history, has no way of paying you past the first year. You know, <laughs> can't be evicted. There's just no reason. Okay, and you know th this mayor. I mean, I know that they mean well. He means well. I understand that, right? But. Uh, uh, this program, it's just not going to work for most landlords. So now, like I said earlier in the video, I have another article for you, right? And it's talking about some of the cons uh, consequences of when a landlord or, you know, even a person who allows a homeless person to come into their home and live in their home, what happens to them, okay? So this article, it's coming from Yahoo News, and it says... Utah Good Samaritan lets homeless man shower in her apartment. He slits her throat. Yeah, and from the title, you should already know this isn't good. Talk about no good deed goes unpunished. An attempt at being a Good Samaritan went horribly wrong after a woman let a homeless man into her Salt Lake City apartment to shower and he slit her throat. Authorities at first did not know what had caused the woman's injury, receiving only a report of a woman bleeding heavily reported KUTV, but the victim told police she had let the man in. After slashing her neck, he fled, she said. The woman, whose identity was withheld, was in critical but stable condition after surgery, police in the Utah city said. Yeah, like I said, there's no way that I'm letting a homeless person into my home out of the goodness of my heart, okay? A lot of homeless people have mental health issues, etc. And I, I, you know... I just can't take that risk, especially because, you know, I have a wife, I have a daughter, okay? I can't allow something like this to happen to this lady to happen to me or my family. So, you know, and as a landlord, they're not going in my property either. So yeah, you can call me heartless or whatever, but there has to be a better solution than what they're proposing.